Hi everyone, I'm Yenin Chen from CWI Amsterdam. Today, I will introduce you the improved algorithms for the shortest vector problem via bounded distance decoding. And this is the joint work with Devesh Agao and Lakin Yakuma from Security Singapore and Ethan Shen from IRIF French. Then, first of all, they will introduce what is the lattice. So, given a basis of vectors, the lattice is the set of all integer combination of those basis vectors. And then as you can see here, the lattice itself is the discrete subgroup over the Rn space. And besides, different bases can lead to the same lattice as well. So the most natural question for the lattice is to ask to find the short lattice point. So we can define the following problem. That is the shortest vector problem. So the shortest vector problem or SVP itself is to ask you to report a shortest number zero of lattice vector. And we will denote number one as the length of such a vector. And besides the SVP, we can also define its approximation function, that is gamma approximate SVP. That is, instead of SU to report the shortest and of zero latest vector, we now SU to report the non zero latest vector such that its length is at the most gamma times lambda one. And as one can imagine, the bigger the approximation vector is, the easier the problem is. So precisely, if the approximation vector is a small as a constant, then the gamma CT will be an NP hard problem. However, if you allow your approximation vector as big as square root of one, then its corresponding gamma SVP will inside the NP in the set for NP. Moreover, if you now allow your approximation vector is as big as 2 to the square root of n, or even 2 to the n log of n over log of n, then there are sub exponential time algorithms or even polynomial time algorithms to solve such kind of approximate shortest vector problem. And in today's talks, we will mainly focus on the exact shortest vector problem. And Right now, there are two mainstream algorithms for solving short vector problem. One is enumeration, and the other is sleeping. And the enumeration algorithm provides the polynomial space algorithm, but the super exponential time to solve the exact short vector problem. On the other hand, the sleeping type algorithm will solve the short vector problem in both time and the space single exponential time. And in our paper, we provide three different algorithms for solving short vector problem. First one is we have a 2 to the 1.74 n time algorithm to solve short vector problem. And its space cost is actually 2 to the 0.5 n. And the second one is a quantum algorithm. And this algorithm solves short vector problem in time 2 to the 0.9535n. And uh, use space 2 to the 0.5n classically and only polynomial many qubits. And the one thing was mentioning here is our quantum algorithm do not use QRAP and is therefore relatively easier to implement in practice. And besides those two results, we also provide the time space trade off for the short vector problem. That is, for arbitrary Q between 4 and the square root of 1, we can solve SVP in time Q to the 13 n and then in space only Q to the 16 n over Q squared. And interestingly, for the extreme case of our algorithm, this can sort of recover the result for the enumeration algorithm and the sleeping type algorithm. That is, if you choose your Q as big as square root of one, then actually we have a super exponential time, but the polynomial space algorithm for the should be effective problem. On the other hand, 
if we choose our Q as a small positive integer, then actually we have uh, both time and space equal to single exponential algorithm for solving short this vector problem. And before we introduce how our algorithm works, we should first introduce some latest tools. First of all, is district Gaussian sampling. So here we first define our continuous Gaussian as low as x, and then the district Gaussian distribution is basically as u to report the latest vector according to the Gaussian distribution. And as you can see, the district Gaussian distribution is more or less like the continuous one. And we can define the corresponding problem we call district Gaussian sampling, such that this problem is used to report the random sample, random latest points from random latest point according to the distribution, according to the district Gaussian distribution. I'm inputting the latest L and the parameter S. And how hard the district Gaussian sampling will be. So basically, the hardness of the district Gaussian sampling will highly depend on its parameter S. So the, as the parameter S, or we call the width or standard deviation of the district Gaussian sampling, goes to very large, then the corresponding district Gaussian sampling will be very easy to sample. On the other hand, if you hope a district Gaussian sampling with very, very small standard deviation, then the corresponding DGS will be very hard to sample. But at the at, but meanwhile, this type of district Gaussian sampling can be used to solve some very hard problem, like short factor problem. And a good way to calculate how large the width of the district Gaussian sampling is the smoothing pyramid. And we will carefully introduce the definition of smoothing pyramid later. But suppose, first of all, we will show the most common strategy for the DGS with small width. So as what I mentioned before, we can easily sample the DGS with very large width. So at the very beginning, we sample lots of DGS with large width, and then we try to use those samples to combine the new district Gaussian sampling with smaller width. And then suppose we can do so, then by repeating this procedure polynomial times, we can achieve the arbitrary small district Gaussian sampling we, uh, we can achieve the arbitrary district Gaussian sampling with arbitrary small widths. But how can we do that? So to do so, we should first know some, some latest tools. First of all is question and the concept. So what is question and the concept? So suppose we have a sub-latest QL for, for some positive integer Q then we can use this QL to define the quotient group latest L quotient QL. And this quotient group is actually isomorphism to the V to the N over Q because we can simply make our latest back to the V to the N by, by, by the linear transformation of low spaces vector. And meanwhile, loss linear map is also applied to the latest QL, which means you can use a linear map, map L quotient QL, back to D to the N quotient Q times D to the N, which is equal to D to the N mod Q. And because we know L quotient QL is isomorphism to the D to the N over Q, we know the number of courses is actually Q to the N minus. And a good way to check if two latest factors are inside the same corset is to calculate its difference. And uh, if the difference is inside the QL, then we will call the two factors are inside the same corset of L quotient QL. And after knowing the quotient and the corsets, 
we can now re restate the algorithm for shrinking weights of distribution sample. That is, at the very beginning, we will sample lots of sample from the distribution distribution, and then we try to find the samples are in the same cost state. And then suppose we find the two samples in the same cost state, then we subtract two of them, and then we output, and then we divide the Q of the output. And then intuitively, we will expect that the sum or the subtraction of two district Gaussian samples will be another district Gaussian samples. And also by dividing the output by Q, we can shrink the width of standard, we can shrink the width of district Gaussian samples. But this only workable for the district Gaussian sampling above the solution. So here we introduce the smoothing pyramid and the smoothing. So what is the smoothing pyramid? So the smoothing pyramid actually depends on two variables here. One is lattice error and the other is accuracy pyramid epsilon. So it's actually the smallest weight to make your distribution simply looks like the continuous one. So precisely, if we choose the width of the distribution assembly big enough, here is square root 2 times q times smooth pyramid. Then the cosset sample from the DGS is distributed uniformly over L quotient QL for arbitrary positive index Q. And also the sum of DGS samples from different cosset will still another district Gaussian sample. And the, as a result, in our following talks, we will call this quantity as the smoothing. And for the most of the time, we will only discuss the digits above the smoothing. And after knowing the distribution sampling and the smoothing pyramid, we should introduce another latest problem that is called bonded distance decoding or BDD oracle. And the BDD oracle is basically the BDD is basically to ask you to report the closest latest point to the target point P with the guarantee that the, the distance of your target factor T is not too far away. Here is alpha lambda one to your latest point. And then we call the lambda as the radius or the decoding distance of BDD. And here is a very straightforward connection from uh, between BDD and the DGS. It is, suppose we can sample lots of samples from the DGS above the smoothing, then actually we can use those samples to compute the, the BDD org. And uh, of course, the radius of BDD will depend on the Samples numbers and also some uh, accuracy parameters here. But uh, for the for convenience, we ignore the part here. But and the main idea here is we can use the digits above smoothing to compute the BDDO. And uh, and the following and for the next slide, we are gonna we are going to introduce the connection between the BDD and the SPP. So here we show how can we use the BDD oracle to solve SPP. So basically our trick is to use BDD energy lemma. So how does this lemma work? So this lemma basically told you that suppose your target factor T is now is close enough to your latest point. Then for arbitrary factor Y, which is not too far away from your target factor T, then you can actually compute your Y by Y mod PL and only by BDD org. And it is not obvious how we can use this lemma to compute the short factor problem. So here we show the explicit uh, example here. First of all, we will set our target factor T equal to zero. And by the definition, we know the distance between the short factor and your target factor T is number one. And then we, 
and then this will less than or equal to p alpha alpha one if we choose p equal to the flow of one over alpha and then because we know the shortest factor is not too far away to your target factor t in that case the shortest factor can be computed by is by the short factor model pl that means we can only we only need to check all the all the possible points inside our quotient pl then one of them can use the equation above to compute the short effect and in that case we have p to be increased to the ddd oracle then we can solve the short effect problem and also because every time we only need to store the short is not zero one as a result the the reduction here is less efficient and after knowing the connection between BDD, DGS, and SDP, we now are ready to show our first result. So our first result is the most time special for the short effect problem. And because we know, suppose we have BDD oracle, then we can use it to solve SDP space efficiently. And also the BDD oracle can be computed by, CD, by DGS above the smoothing. Therefore, the only thing we need to deal with is to construct a time space trade off for the DGS above the smooth. So, how can we do this? So, basically, our trick is to check the sum of the random samples from the district Gaussian distribution. And if some of those the random samples are inside the QL, then we just output the sum of them. And intuitively, we know those sum, sum of those district Gaussian sampling will be another district Gaussian sampling. And also we know they are inside the QL. So the output will actually close, will actually be close to the district Gaussian distribution with latest QL and with slightly bigger width. And uh, moreover, we know the corsets of L, the corsets of lost samples were distributed uniformly over L quotient QL, which means by the generalized uh, first day paradox, we only need Q to the N over D samples, then we can find such, such D random factors. So as a result, if we choose our d appropriately, then this square root of d over q less than one, then the width of DGS shrinks. And uh, as you can see here, if we choose our d by q square over two, then everything is okay because the width of DGS will shrink by a constant for each iteration. Of course, it's a very high level idea and there is there are lots of issues we need to deal with in our proof but for the time issue i will now uh, i will now mention all of them here and for 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 anyone who are interested in this part please refer to our paper directly and as a result by this main idea we actually have a time space trade off for the district Gaussian sampling. And our time actually need to kill to the bigger one time because we need to check all the all possible combination and which will be Q to the n over d and q to the n over d to the d, which will be q to the bigger one. But our, our space compared to here is only q to the n over q squared because we only need lots of many factors to find a collision. And then by repeating the procedure polynomial times, we can achieve the DGS with desired width. And as a result, combine the DGS we can use to use it to solve the BDDO and then use BDDO we can use it use BDDO we can solve SDP space efficiently and then to the end we have our main theory one that is 
for arbitrary q between 4 and the square root of 1, we can actually solve SVP in time q to the 30n and uh, only in space q to the 16n over q squared. And as why I told you before, the extreme case of this algorithm sort of fit the enumeration algorithm and the sitting algorithm, but it is not as good as the state of the art. But uh, it still provides a very interesting result for the time space for the smooth time space trade-off for shooting for solving short vector problem. And as for the second result, we showed a faster quantum algorithm for the SVP. And uh, we quickly recall that suppose we hope to solve SVP, then we can use three to the n queries to BD the oracle with radius one third. And if we can compute the BD the oracle one third space, uh, one third efficiently, then we are done. But the best thing here is we need lots of samples from the DGS to compute the BDD oracle and also to compute the BDD oracle with radius one third. We need the DGS slightly below the smooth, which means we lost, of, we lost lots of good properties. And as a result, we should we should take lots of time to only compute one sample. And here we should use two to the 0.5 and time to prepare only one sample. And it is very costly. But the good thing here is those sample can actually be used, can be reused. And as a result, we can first use 2 to the 0.5 n times 2 to the 0.1608 n times to prepare the sufficient sample beforehand. And then we can use those sample to compute the BDD with different input respectively. And as a result, we are ready to show our content algorithm. So our algorithm is first of first, first to use the quantum power and the, the BDD oracle to prepare all the SVP candidate in the support position. And then we use the quantum minimal finding to find the shooting of zero one over those candidates. And the, by the quantum power, we will have the causative speed up for the search part. And uh, as a result, the total time cost will be two to the point one six zero a n times three to the point five i uh, three to the point five n, which is two to the point nine five six three n. And this is actually the fittest algorithm for solve SVP so far. And the one thing was mentioning here is we do not need to use Q and here. And uh, this type of quantum algorithm will be relatively easier to implement in practice. And as our third result, we provide a tighter time space trade for the short factor problem. And our idea is basically perturb our top target factor T and then use some epsilon four idea. And as you can see here, we perturb our target factor T and then we use BDD enlarging lemma. And uh, to the end, the BDD enlarging lemma will guarantee us to enumerate the latest the, to enumerate the uh, latest point within two alpha lambda one to target factor t, and the, the red dotted and the, the red dotted ball will cover the spherical cap with the specific uh, angle c, and also we know the spherical cap with angle theta will cover a random point with probability size theta to the end. So by trying diff by trying those different target factor t for one over size theta to the end then we can cover the shortest vector problem with overwhelming probability. And if we choose the decoding distance of VDD oracle appropriately, we will have our tighter time space trade off for the SVP values 2 to the 1.741 n time and the 2 to the 0.5 n space to solve the shortest vector problem. And then it's slightly slower than the state of the art but you use much fewer space than the, than the state of the R algorithm. 
And to conclude, we provide three algorithms in our paper. First of all, is the smooth time space trade-off for the shooting vector problem. And the second thing is state of the art quantum algorithm for the SVP. And the, the last one is the space efficient single exponential time algorithm for the SVP. And as the future work, because we know our algorithm is the time complexity of our algorithm is highly dependent on the kissing number. So if one can give a beta upper bound of kissing number, then our algorithm, the time complexity of our algorithm will immediately goes, goes faster. So, and also we use the DGS to contract our DDD here, but maybe there, there are another efficient way to compute the DDD oracle. So if one can compute the DDD oracle with faster measure, then actually our algorithm can be even faster. And the last, we also wondering if there is the most time space trade off for the exact CPP, which is also very important. There's this problem in. And let's all send everyone for this.